good morning, Miss Phyllis Franks. My name is Jacob Petrashek. I'm a solicitor with the firm Parker and Tracy. Thank you for coming in this morning. Um, I understand that you've had an accident uh, of, of some nature. Um, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, actually, I got an accident of my ankle when I was in a trip uh, several days ago okay. in Castle. All right, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, before you tell me more about this, uh, you said it was an ankle? Ankles, yeah. Yeah, an an your ankle industry at the castle. Um, could I get some details from you um, as part of our client onboarding process in the firm? Um, okay. What is your full name and address? So my full name is Felix Rosa Franks. Uh, I live in... Uh, 39 Bramson Street, B R I M S O N Street, Stratford, London, E39 L R. E39 L R? E39 L R. Okay. Okay. And do you have a phone number, Ms. Franks? Yeah. I My phone number is 02. O eight five five six nine seven five O. Okay. Uh, do you have an email address that I could reach you at, or do you prefer to be contacted strictly by the phone? Uh, you can take my email address. So. Okay. Uh, capital letter F. L I S S. Short, short letter L I S S on um, six nine at hotmail dot co dot uk. Okay. Um, well, thank you. All right. So, um, thank you for that. And do you have any? Uh, did you bring any personal identification with you? Uh, like like a passport or a, a yeah. utility bill? Yeah, you yeah. Know? I got my, I got my passport. Okay. Fail. Okay, we'll make a copy of that here shortly. Um, so tell me a little bit more about this ankle injury at a castle. What happened here to you? So uh, several days ago, um, uh, it's like uh, day, day 15th of April, I went to and castle uh, with, uh, located in St. Peter's Road, Broad says Kent, uh, CT 10, 1 LN with my friend. So, uh, which is a very popular tourist attraction okay. uh, in Broad Stairs. Uh, so it has a very rich history and gives us a wonderful view uh, out of the, to the sea when the weather is clear. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and the castle, I think, uh, is owned by Iden Castle Visitors Attraction Limited. So, uh, okay, Eden Castle Limited, Eden Castle okay. Visitors Attraction Limited. Okay. So I arrived at the castle at about uh, 12, 12 a.m. and spent about three hours there uh, when the accident happened. Okay. Brands decided to have afternoon tea uh, in the visit visitor center. So I, because we were quite thirsty and hungry. Mm -hmm. so, we, so we were working, so I was working ahead of my friends uh, when the accident happened. And, um, Even though I, I was working quite fast, uh, I was I was watching where where I uh, I was going. Uh, I was carrying a handbag, but this wasn't particularly. That's happy. normal, right? You you always carry a handbag, as does almost every woman in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I was wearing flat shoes. Okay. So, like sneakers or like flat dress shoes. 
just or tra just, trainers, just or. a common common flat shoes. Okay. Common flat shoes. So, uh, to get into the visitor center, center, I had to go up a small flat of three wooden steps. Uh, the steps looked quite old and warm. Uh, and I, I took that to be in keeping with surroundings at Arden Castle, which was built uh, in the Middle Ages. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as soon as I put my left foot on the middle of the three steps, it gave me uh, beneath, uh, beneath me, and I landed, landed awkwardly on the ground before the steps, uh, below the steps, and and so I broke my ankle badly. Okay. Was there so any I, sign on the steps indicating uh, a, a, a danger? I don't think so. I okay. don't think so. So I was in a lot of pain and and uh, cried for help. My okay. sister, my friends came to comfort me, and uh, some someone, some visitors also called the ambulance Im immediately. Okay. And so did you go to so so after the the, the ambulance came and what happened then? Where did you where did I you... was taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Margate, and I was uh, and a series of X-rays uh, were was carried out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you still injured, or, or have you recovered? I'm I'm still injured. According to the to my medical, uh, 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 according to the uh, after I, I to be honest, I was uh, subsequently transferred to uh, St. Barthes in London. So uh, my doc doctor, my my surgeon. And so they transferred you to two hospitals. Did you have surgery or or what or or, or was this yeah, just I, a, I a cast? A I got a surgery. I got a surgery. I got surgery. So my surgeon, uh, in St. Barthes in London, Doctor Idbo. Uh, told me that uh, he's not optimistic about my long-term prognosis and that would mostly uh, like I will I will I will be left with permanent permanent loss of function in the ankle. Okay. Who is your doctor? What is his name? Doctor I Doctor I Q B A L. Doctor Doctor Iqbal. Okay, so he can he can. Okay, they can verify that this is a bad prognosis. That this is permanent damage. So, like, what's the pro permanent damage? I mean, you're still in a cast now, or, 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 or have you have you have you been? The surgery was just not successful. It's so it's it's permanently limiting. Your uh, I don't I don't I don't think there's any problem with the surgeon, but just because of the injury, the, the original injury was very serious. So okay. I may not be able to recover from from uh, re totally recover from from this injury. I mean, okay, all right. And what were you doing before? Were you like a um, a construction worker? What what line of work were you in before? Oh, so I I worked as a shop assistant in a supermarket. Okay, uh, and uh, and you've been off. Oh, uh, you you you've been off work. Are you going to be? Are you going to return to that? job or well i hope so but i i was told that my the supermarket is considering to terminate my contract with them because they don't think i will be fit to do the job anymore okay so you were a shop assistant so you like thick loaded shelves and and took stuff out of boxes and whatnot <laughs> yeah okay and that job is may very well be over um how much did you make in that job so I got like uh, 1,400 pounds a month after the time. Okay. okay. And are you on benefits right now on, on job seekers allowance or, or, so or what I kind only, of, uh, what I is only, your income now? I only receive statutory sick pay of 88 pounds a week. Okay. And how long has that been going on for? 
Uh, uh, never mind. We'll, we'll figure out the math when we fill out, fill out claims forms. Um, okay. So it sounds like you do have a case, um, a, a, probably a very good case uh, in this for this personal injury claim. Um, now, I understand um, when you contacted us that you have some, some concerns about um, covering the fee. Is that uh, uh, about funding this, this case? Uh, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So let me walk you through uh, how this funding. So generally speaking, um, the loser in a case like this will pay the litigation costs for mm-hmm. both the for both the plaintiff and the defendant. Um, but ultimately the court decides and has discretion about uh, about how costs are assigned. And they also judge the conduct of the parties in litigation. Um, bad conduct is looked poorly upon. So uh, and we have options available to us in the realm of alternative dispute resolution. And of course, at a later date, we have to re-review our cost benefit analysis uh, regarding this claim. If some facts come up that that may be better for you or worse for you uh, in in regards to the prospect of success, which right now to me seem fairly high uh, based on what you're telling me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to ask you, do you have any insurance policies um, that uh, oh. like before uh, before the event insurance policy that might cover the cost of litigation? No, I don't. I don't. Actually, I was contacted by the um, environmental health officer from Kent County. Okay. Kent County also, uh, they told me that they were thinking of are prosecuting prosecuting uh, Iden Castle for my accident, and they had failed to properly maintain as they they failed to failed to make, properly maintain the stairs. Okay. And I think the council had warned uh, Iden Castle in the past about the poor maintenance of the public parts of the building. Okay, these are further facts that may lend themselves to to a very even higher prospect of success. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, those are not insurance policies. And even though the council, I want to tell you this up front, even though the council is investigating them and thinking about uh, you know independently uh, 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 entering into litigation with them, uh, mm-hmm. no legal aid is available for a personal injury claim. So um, you cannot resort to, to, to legal aid to, to fund for this either. And you don't have any insurance policies. You're not a member of a union at, your, at, the, the, at the grocery shop that you work at? No, but I don't know why, why I cannot get any aid for, for, for personal injury. It's just how the legal aid system is structured. Um, luckily, that's luckily uh, we the legal aid is not for for like there are certain I- I- uh, areas of law where where legal aid is just not available. Personal injury is one of them, uh, but criminal is. Uh, if you are you know charged with a crime, you you can obtain that. Uh, you know other aims, you know other types of like you know uh, uh, probate law. Uh, is, is generally not available for legal aid or okay. some consumer um, consumer goods issues also not available for legal aid. Okay. Um, just personally, it's just not available. It's just, it's just not covered by legal aid. But we have some alternative uh, uh, ways of funding um, okay. these uh, this case. One of them is the damages-based agreement uh, in which the firm would get a, a share of the damages awarded to you. Most common way of funding this case is the conditional fee agreement, um, where we would have a, a percentage of the claim. The, the, the Eden Castle would pay a percentage of the overall claims costs 
at the end of the case. And then at, you would also pay separately a success fee, you as the client, uh, inclusive of VAT. And all of this would be capped at 25% of, 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 the, uh, of the overall award. Okay. So, so I there's no no win no fee right? Um, well, not yet. We could. You would also be eligible for qualified one way cost shifting um, on separate terms, which would make this no win no fee, and that would. Uh, but but that is yeah. We can so, we can move up to that. Yes. Okay. So, so what you have just uh, suggested is, I don't quite understand how it works. Uh, well, we would need to put this in writing and okay. we would need to, uh, again, put it, we, we would put, it needs to be written and here's how it works with a, a conditional fee agreement with a success uh, fee. So the client, so the opponent will pay a certain percent of the overall costs at the end of the litigation. And then on top of that, the client will pay a success fee, inclusive of VAT, capped at 25%. Oh. Okay, okay. And yes, we uh, th th this s s slightly differs from a damages-based agreement, which is just an overall uh, charge on, on the damages oh. received. And it's it's separately from qualifies separately from the qualified one way cost shifting system, in so, which uh, the qualified one way cost shifting system works by uh, essentially um, it caps uh, the the cost that you pay to the defendant in the event of losing the case at the amount that you pay um, to 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 us. Uh, or to, that, that you uh, win in the case of the, in the award, so that if you don't win, you don't don't pay. Although in that case, you would theoretically still be, um, you could possibly still be on on the the on the hook for um, uh, paying our fees. Um, and with that in mind, I guess we could discuss like what what is your ability to pay for for after the event insurance because we, we we could potentially take out an, an another if you don't have didn't have before the in, event insurance or or trade union support um we could also explore what what are, are, are um i understand that you went from making 1400 pounds a week to making 88 pounds a week are you a, capable of um self-funding this or or paying for insurance I in the don't course of because i don't have any insurance so okay i i, I mean i may have a difficult time paying you if we don't okay okay so, so self-funding and any after the event insurance are are off are, are just they're not financial it's very difficult for me. Okay, I understand that. Uh, then in that case, I think that the, the conditional fee agreement um, or, or damage-based agreement and qualified one-way cost are you know, the only way to move forward with funding this case um, okay. for you. Um, so um, do you have any other, any further questions about this? Um, no. Okay. Um, well, with that in mind, then I will. Uh, so, uh, as long as you're interested in in giving instructions to this firm, I think that we can move on to preparing a letter of claim for you, um, if that's all right. Okay. 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 So I'll work on a letter of claim, and I will send you a a, a letter of advice detailing what we've discussed here in mm. this meeting shortly. Um, and, um, we will, uh, I, I will touch base with you as I am drafting the letter of claim, um, regarding the length of time that you're out on the statutory sick pay scheme so that we can better calculate your losses. Okay, great. All right. 
Um, so thank you very much for coming in today, uh, Miss Miss Franks.